Hi everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Andrei and in the next few videos I'm going to show you how to build a website from scratch using Ruby on Rails, Tailwind CSS and PostgreSQL. Whether you are an experienced programmer who simply wants to expand their knowledge base or a newbie who wants to learn the basics of building a website, I hope this video is for you and I'll try my best to explain to you what I'm doing here. The website I'm going to build in the next few videos would be a bakery shop and a blog. Called, of course, Bake Off because our company is Bake Off. The reason I'm doing this might seem random at first, but after thinking about it for a bit and thinking about what my boss would let me occupy my time with, having a website that has an admin dashboard, logging functionality, order processing and an option to create posts that can be liked and commented might become useful when trying to explain the biggest features a website can have. Think about it as a general online shop together with a Facebook clone. So probably that would help you in your endeavor when creating websites. The main pillar of our website will be the Ruby on Rails framework since it's very good at rapidly prototyping and building new web applications. Tailwind CSS will help us build a very nice user interface without having to deal with the traditional CSS. And PostgreSQL, an open source relational database, will help us store our data securely and efficiently. As for the code editor, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code since it's a free version and I don't have to pay money for it and also because it's probably available to most of you guys. If you want to use another editor, feel free to do so. So buckle up, get your energy drink and your chips and let's get started. Okay, so first of all, make sure that you have Ruby on Rails installed on your computer. I have added some links in the description for you to do that. And also, if you are able to make sure that your system is Unix based like Linux or Mac OS, because that's where Ruby on Rails behaves best. Either way, even Windows should be good enough. In case you want to use any other database or CSS framework for your website, please make sure that you have it installed on your computer by checking the documentation on the main website. So first of all, we are going to open the terminal, go into our desired folder for this project and type the following command. I hope it's somewhere down here and make sure that you sit and watch because Ruby on Rails will do the rest of the, rest of the job. As you can probably see in the terminal, this command will create everything you need in your Ruby on Rails project. Once the project was created successfully, go into that folder and run the command bundle install. In my case, I didn't need to run it again because it happened when the project was first created, but please make sure that it happened in your case as well. The next step, it will be to create the database files, which can be done with the following command, which creates two database files, one for the test environment and one for the development environment. Once the database files are also created, you can now start the server. This can be done by using either the rails s command or the point slash bin slash dev command, which I believe are also on the bottom of the screen. You should use the bin slash dev command since this also opens the Tailwind server which helps us when we want to change the frontend directly without having to restart the server once again. But if you want to use the Rails S command, you should also open another terminal and also run the command Rails Tailwind CSS watch, as you can see down on the screen. The name of the project can be changed if you want. I chose Bake Off because like I said before, Bake Off. And also the CSS and database parameters can also be changed if you want to use any other database or any other CSS framework. By default, Ruby on Rails will work with SQLite 3 and SCSS, which is like CSS with superpowers. But in this project, like I said, I will use Tailwind and PostgreSQL. Next, open up your favorite browser and type localhost.3000 in your address bar and you should see a page similar to the one right now on the screen. To close the server, go back into the terminal and press Ctrl C. Hey, are you still there? Great. Now that we have made it this far, the next steps should be smooth sailing from now. Now that the project was created and we made sure that everything works, the next step would be to save the changes. But you probably wonder why we need to save it since it's already saved on the local machine because the changes already appeared in the web browser when we opened it. Well, we are not going to save it on the local machine, we are going to save it on the cloud. And no, we are not using Google Drive for this. Instead, we will use a versioning control system. This will help us 
in case something happens to our computer and we still need that project but we weren't able to save it before, in case we want to work on this project with many other developers or even to look cool in front of other software engineers that already know how to use this stuff. There are many options out there for version and control systems but the most popular out of them is probably Git. I will add some links in the description on how to install it on your local machine. After that, you can go back to the terminal where your project is, type in git init, and this should initialize a new repository. For our Rails project, this process should have been already done when creating the project, but in case it wasn't, please do this before going, going any further. Once the project is initialized, go ahead and type in git add-a to add Oriel files to the current project. This will stage all the file commands, but I will do it directly from the Visual Studio code from the Git interface. The next step is to commit our changes using either the command right now on the screen or by using the commit function in our ID of choice. Of course, every commit needs to have a name, so that's why there is an M parameter and create project can be replaced with any other text that you want. Like I mentioned before, Git is useful when working with other people on the same project because it allows you to create different versions of it using branches. Branches are useful when wanting to create different features and adding them to the project without affecting the stable version that is currently running on the server. At work, we are using Gitflow for this process simply because it's a, useful, it's a useful and easy thing to add and it allows you to create, delete and merge branches without worry. I will add some links in the description about how Gitflow works and how you can install it on your machine. Now, if you want to use it, make sure that in your repository there are two main branches called main and develop. We already have the main branch because it was created when we first initialized the repository, so now we only have to create the develop branch. Once we have both branches, we can run Gitflow init in the terminal below as you can see on the screen. The next step is to simply hit enter on all the commands because it simply asks you which branches to use and how to name them. If you want to name them in any other way, make sure to type it in. Now, let's do a quick recap with what we have so far. So, we have created the Ruby project, we have made sure that the server works, and we also added a versioning system and Gitflow to the project. The next two things that we are going to do in this video are creating a temporary homepage and pushing all the changes to GitHub. For this step, we can simply create a new branch on which we will make the necessary changes. In the following videos, we will cover the project structure in more details, but for now, just use the command I've written in the terminal window to create a new controller from the homepage. This command will create a new controller called HomeController with a single index method, an HTML file for that method and the default route to that page. If we start the server and type the new route in the address bar, we can see the new page with details about where that file is located in the project. You might notice that our new homepage is not a homepage yet. This can be fixed by changing the root path in the roots file as you can see in the video. So far, so good. Since everything we did until now was relatively easy, let's change the text for the homepage a little bit. This change makes sure that the new page will appear when we access the localhost 3000 link instead of the default Rails page. For this, we have to open the index.html file that can be found in app views home folder. In this file, we can see only a div that contains the text shown on the main page. But if you go into the browser, right click on the web page and then click on inspect, you can see that the web page is actually more complex than just a single div. Where can we find the rest? Well, it's simple enough. We go to the layouts folder and open the application HTML file. This is basically the frame of the web pages containing all the common details like the style sheets and the JavaScript files. All the other web pages that we will make will actually replace this yield tag when shown in a browser.
Now, let's get back to our home page and start by changing the title to, let's say, work in progress, and then add two paragraphs to give the user more details about what's going on here. Since we have shown you the frame of the website, let's do some changes there as well, like for example changing the background color to a grey instead of white. Using Tailwind makes this change very simple, we just need to add a class to the body tag, go to the browser, refresh the page, and the changes are visible as you can see. And of course, after so many changes, let's also commit them so that we don't risk losing our precious homepage. Since we initialized a repository on our local machine, what do you think about pushing it to an external cloud? I will use GitHub for this, but you can use any other service that provides versioning control systems. Going back to the GitHub website, we can see that the changes have been uploaded or pushed since this is how the process is called here. We can see that we have three branches, main being the default one, and feature slash create homepage is one commit in front of it, while develop doesn't have anything else added yet. The commits are easy to see here, in case you don't use an IDE for committing the changes, or if you forgot what a certain commit contains. If we want to merge certain changes in another branch, we can either use the git flow workflow, or pull requests, since having their history in Git will make it easier to follow the changes over a longer period of time. Since the feature branches are created using the develop as the parent branch, we will of course merge the changes into this branch. And that's it for this video. We've managed to create a Ruby on Rails project and change the homepage so far. If you found this tutorial useful, please give a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't lose the next episode. Hope I'll see you then, and happy coding!